Over an evening of drinks in Cairo, two British Special Operations executive agents devised the organization's boldest plan yet. During the Axis occupation of the Greek island of Crete, the two men hatched a plan to kidnap the feared Friedrich Wilhelm Muller. For Captain William Stanley Moss, barely 18, the mission was his first chance to shine within the top-secret SOE. But for Major Patrick Lee Fermer, who'd been present during the invasion of the island and seen Muller's savagery against the population firsthand, the operation was personal. However, as the plan began to unfold and the men prepared to travel into Crete, one of the most dangerous islands in the Mediterranean, invaded by the Italians and the Germans, Muller was transferred. After evaluating the immense risks of such an operation, the SOE had two choices, to cancel the mission outright or to go on with it. As part of the United Kingdom's most elite spy and covert operations organization, the decision was clear for the two men, to face the danger and parachute into Crete to claim their prey. When the Germans invaded Crete in the spring of 1941, they ran into a wall of resistance from the locals, a first in the war. As the Wehrmacht began to arrive in the Mediterranean location, enraged Cretan civilians armed themselves with knives, axes, and scythes, and fought off and attacked paratroopers, sometimes even with their bare hands, inflicting many casualties and becoming a constant threat to occupying forces. This resistance movement remained active throughout the war. It was heavily supported by the British, particularly the Special Operations Executive, a secret branch of UK intelligence established to conduct espionage, irregular warfare like sabotage, raiding ops, special recon, and resistance support. In the late summer of 1943, two young SOE officers, Captain William Stanley Morris, a recent recruit, and Major Patrick Lee Fermer, met up for drinks and came up with a daring mission to kidnap General Friedrich Wilhelm Muller. The commander of Germany's 22nd Air Landing Infantry Division and Crete's governor, Friedrich Wilhelm Muller rose to infamy and earned the nickname the Butcher of Crete due to his brutal reputation. Despite the dangerous nature of the mission, the proposal was quickly approved, and after undergoing training at an SOE camp, Lee Fermer, Moss, and two members of the Cretan resistance, Georgios Tarakis and Emmanuel Paterakis, set off to Crete. That night, the group took off in an aircraft from Egypt, planning to parachute into enemy territory, as was standard practice for the highly trained SOE agents. After arriving near the small drop zone, lousy weather began to shake their plans. After successfully parachuting, Major Lee Fermer was rapidly descending upon Crete when he noticed the aircraft was forced to leave due to bad weather, and he watched it disappear into the night. Upon landing, resistance fighters immediately hid the agent. Lee Fermer met up with a fellow SOE member and military advisor to the rebels, Sandy Renda. For two months, the Major hid, as the remainder of his kidnapping task force attempted to land eight more times. Finally, on the night of April 4th, a motor launch brought the men close enough to the island's south coast to row ashore in a dinghy. The party marched across Crete's mountains toward the village of Katamanitsa, where they met Mickey Akamianos, the agent in charge of SOE operations on the island. Akamianos, who held a grudge against the Germans as his father had fallen while fighting the Germans during the invasion, told the party the disastrous news. Only a couple of days prior, Muller had been replaced by Major General Heinrich Kreipe, a decorated veteran of the Eastern Front. Despite the initial shock and disappointment, Commander Lee Fermer decided to go ahead with the plan, only changing the target. The squad was complete, and the abduction operation was in full effect. While Moss stayed hidden, holed up in the nearby mountains with the resistance, Major Lee Fermer, who could pass for a native, set off on an adventure with Akomianos. Disguised as peasants, the men took a bus to the capital city of Heraklion, and then walked for five miles to reach Kripa's villa. General Heinrich Kripa lived in a large house in the village of Knossos, which, according to legend, was once the location of the famous labyrinth, home of the vicious mythical creature the Minotaur, where he feasted on his victims. Kripa loved ancient Greece. It was no accident he chose to live in a place soaked in myth and history. According to post-war correspondence, General Heinrich Kripa was never popular among his own men for many reasons. The more significant was because he'd constantly object and nag about the stopping of his vehicle at Nazi checkpoints. The rebels stayed inside a house owned by Akomiano's family across from the general's villa to observe their target's patterns and whereabouts for a week. General Kripa's regular schedule made him vulnerable. His chauffeur drove him to his headquarters and back home twice daily, 
the last trip around 10 p.m., sometimes later if you played bridge. One day, while undercover, the two SOE agents spotted Kripa in his chauffeur-driven car. When they locked eyes with the Nazis, their hearts pounded. They were even more surprised when the general, rather than questioning them, waved at them in a friendly manner and went on his way. After waving back, the duo devised the perfect idea for their attack, to stop his car at night and grab him. The operation counted on the villa's staff to assume he was out playing bridge to give the SOE kidnappers a few hours head start. The place where they would attack the car was a T-junction from the ride to and from his headquarters. Because cars had to almost stop at this intersection, this was an ideal place for an ambush. After returning to the mountain retreat, they informed Moss and the Resistance about the plan. On the night of April 26, 1944, after four failed attempts, the Special Operations Executive Agents and their Greek comrades steeled themselves for the daredevil task of intercepting General Heinrich Kripa's car. At 9.30 p.m., the Outlook spotted Kripa's oncoming car nearing the T-junction and alerted Lee Fermer and Moss to get into position. Wearing German uniforms provided by Akomianos, Lee Fermer and Moss waved down Kripa's car. After asking the German general for his document and password to pass through, an impatient Kripa got out of the car and asked the men their units. Then, with audacious calm, Lee Fermer informed the general that he was now a prisoner of war in British hands. The news was a shocking jolt to Kripa, who had ironically received a promotion the day before. The group then knocked the driver out and bound Kripa. They began the next stage of the operation by impersonating the German officers. Lee Fermer, now playing the general with his cap on, Moss playing the driver, and Alcamianos crammed into the front seat, while two Greek comrades squeezed in with the captured German in the back, knife pressing at his throat. They maneuvered the car through Heraklion, breezing past 22 checkpoints. Thanks to Kripa's infamous rudeness, the Germans on duty didn't suspect a thing. When they were far enough away, the party split, with the main group, led by Moss, marching Kripa to their hideout in the Ida Mountains. At the same time, Lee Fermer's other team drove and left the car on the coast to make the Germans think the kidnap party had already evacuated by sea. To spare the brave people of Crete from retaliation, Lee Fermer left a note with the car explicitly stating General Kripa had been captured by a British raiding force, stating, quote, By the time you read this, he will be on his way to Cairo. Moss and the two Greek agents embarked on an arduous trek across the Cretan mountains, helped by resistance fighters. But the Germans, despite their dislike of Kripa, were not fooled, and soon more than 30,000 troops were scouring the island while search aircraft flew overhead. The first evacuation attempt nearly turned catastrophic. They were mere hours from the beach when they got word. German soldiers were on the beach, cluelessly stumbling upon their escape route while hunting for their commander. The group hurriedly marched back into the mountains to hide, while Lee Fermer sought an SOE radio operator to get new instructions. At this point, the Germans were hot on their trail, just an hour behind. When a new breach site was secured through SOE radio, the final march toward the point turned into a celebratory procession, with hundreds of peasants and resistance fighters cheering along the mountain path, while Kripa swayed on top of the mule in silence, as he'd done for the majority of the time he was kidnapped. After 17 nerve-wracking days on the run from the Germans, at 11 p.m. on May 14th, the escape launch appeared alongside a commando unit, ready to help fight their way off the island. No enemies came. The commandos weren't needed after all, and the group slipped off Crete undetected, setting a course for Egypt. Upon their arrival in Egypt, the strain of the lengthy and arduous mission that tested the survival skills of the SOE agents finally got to Lee Fermer, and he collapsed. Afterward, Lee Fermer and Moss were awarded the Distinguished Service Order and the Military Cross, respectively. Both men wrote about their incredible experiences. According to a resistance leader on Crete, following the kidnapping of Kripa, everybody felt taller. Meanwhile, the Kripa kidnapping dealt a blow to Axis morale on the island. Allied propaganda suggested that the operation was a cover story and that the German general had defected, possibly out of fear, during an Allied invasion. In fact, the Nazis did not immediately retaliate to the kidnapping, probably due to Kripa's popularity. According to wartime lore, some even toasted with champagne once they found out the Allies had taken him. But in 1944, retaliation would come in the form of the Butcher of Crete himself. Friedrich Wilhelm Muller was reinstated as a commander, 
and he was prompt to dish out reprisals against the local population. As for Lieutenant General Kripa, he spent three years of captivity in Canada and was released after the war ended.